All right, everyone, uh, if you want to take a seat, I think we're going to get started. Um, like I said, if you're having any problems with the Wi-Fi, it's capital T trust at MFCU. MFCU is all lowercase. Um, thank you all for coming. Yeah. What's the name? Sammy's Wireless. Oh, Sammy's. Okay. Yeah. I'm not <laughs> quite sure about how that Who's name Sammy came is? about. Who Sammy is, why they're in this training center, but thank, thank you for the Wi-Fi, Sammy. Um, I'd also like to thank the credit union for giving us this space. Um, they've been a really great sponsor for all of these boot camps. Um, okay, so I want to talk just briefly about the Missoula Community Foundation, who is the host for Give Local um, and the sponsor of, of all these boot camps. Um, so our mission is to inspire long-term local philanthropy by connecting people who care with causes who matter, the causes that matter. Um, and we're trying to work towards the, the good of, for the good of Missoula forever. Um, so how we do that is we do grant making. We have a small grant program. Um, we have a scholarship program for local high school students who are choosing to stay in the state of Montana for their college education. Uh, we do a project called uh, the Missoula Project for Nonprofit Excellence. Um, some of you may have heard of it. Uh, some of you may be applying for this grant cycle. But it's a capacity building grant uh, for nonprofits to do an in-depth work with a consultant, figure out what their nonprofit needs to be successful moving forward. And then as the second part of that grant, they can apply for a project that the consultant has identified as something positive for them to work on and get the money to fund that project. Uh, we do fiscal sponsorships. Uh, so right now we're the fiscal sponsor for uh, Tell Us Something. For uh, There's an effort for the Missoula Choral Society to have a Cuban choir come uh, to Missoula in the spring. Uh, we also have an initiative called Climate Smart Missoula that's uh, working to make sure Missoula is uh, more resilient towards the effects of climate change, um, and making sure we're reducing our carbon footprint. And on that note, I see a lot of reusable mugs, so thank you all for bringing your reusable mugs. We'll make sure we get you those points for the best overall campaign <laughs> contest. Um, and we also do uh, philanthropic education. So we had an event called Willapalooza um, to help more Montanans create wills. Uh, we're trying to educate around uh, the Montana Endowment Tax Credit by working with the Montana Community Foundation. And we're um, always willing to share that information with other nonprofits if they're reaching out to their donors who might want to uh, be creative with their giving um, in their wills. And then also our, our big piece is Give Local Missoula County. So uh, we're really excited to have a big turnout so far this year. We have around 110 nonprofits signed up so far. Uh, with more people signing up every day. Uh, I think we'll probably have around 120 or 130. Um, and we're doing a couple of new things this year. Uh, one is the Independent Giving Day insert, uh, which I've been working with a lot of you to confirm your information for that. Um, so that'll be exciting. Uh, two Thursdays before Give Local, so I think it's April 26 or something like that. Uh, the Independent will print a special insert that features all of our nonprofits participating. Um, so the idea is uh, the Missoula community can page through it, figure out what they're interested in, learn about a nonprofit that they haven't heard of before that fits their passions, and hopefully give to you on um, Tuesday, May 3rd. We um, are also doing the best overall campaign contest, which you can sign up for on the Give Local website. So it's givelocalmissoula.org slash about. Um, and right now there's a pretty complicated uh, table up there on like all the ways you can earn points. Uh, we have a more simplified slide um, in this presentation that we'll talk about later and we're working to get that uh, information that's on the website up now um, more condensed and simplified so it's user friendly for all of you. We're also doing a video project again this year. We've done this for all uh, the last two years of Give Local. But we're changing it a bit this year. Uh, there's two options. Um, so for $25, you can come in with your nonprofit. Uh, they will take a still photo of you and other nonprofits that are in your smaller group when you designate your focal area on the Give Local sign up. So it could be human services, animals, environment, et cetera. You and all the other nonprofits from that group um, will be take, have a still photo taken together. And then together you'll have a 30 second spot on television. The other option is a little bit more expensive. It's $50. Uh, same idea with the still photo, but it's just your nonprofit. Um, and so your nonprofit will have that 30 second spot on TV. And both of those, regardless of which one you choose to participate in, um, you can use that photo for your own, or use that video for your own purposes moving on. 
Um, and all of that information is also on the Give Local website as well. Yes? So the video will be aired on TV, like a commercial? Uh, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. On all stations? Or? I'm not sure if Meredith has decided which stations it's going to be on, but I know you're guaranteed at least one 30-second spot. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and we're also going to have a community giving celebration uh, to celebrate all the hard work that people have put in leading up to Give Local and hopefully the $300,000 or more we raised for Missoula that day. Um, and also we're shooting for $1 million for Montana in one day. Uh, we have about, I think it's 11 communities are so participating across the state of Montana. So we're hoping to raise $1 million in 24 hours for Montanans. Um, and then uh, just lastly, I'd like to thank all of our sponsors for Give Local. So as I said, the credit union has been a great sponsor. We also have the Good Food Store. First Interstate Bank, um, the Montana Community Foundation, the Noceum Foundation, and uh, Missoula Fresh Market. Uh, so without further ado, I will turn it over to Erin. Does it change? Yep. All right, good. Well, good morning. Good morning. Oh, you guys. Seriously? <laughs> it's going to be a long two hours. So I'm Erin Steele. I work at United Way of Missoula County, and we are so excited to be able to partner with the Community Foundation on this Giving Day effort for Missoula. And, um, and so thank you for coming to the Board Engagement Boot Camp. Today we're going to talk about how we can get our boards involved in this opportunity for our community and really expand their role in our organization and, and um, highlight their leadership in our community. So. Um, so hopefully you're awake because we're going to have lots of chance. We're going to need your ideas, so get your wheels going. If that means you need more coffee, please help yourself. And um, just a couple of quick checks. Can you guys hear me in the back? Yeah. All right, great. And just holler if you can. You know, like international signs for you're too quiet. <laughs> um, and and then who now? How many of you have participated in Give Local previously? All right, so then we've got a few new folks in the, in the room, yeah? Are the people who haven't participated before uh, signed up for Give Local this year? Okay. All right, great. And then who came last week to our social media boot camp? All right, good. So, so, so it was good enough that you guys came back. Thank you. And then we do have a couple of more boot camps coming up the rest of this month. So we'll see you every Thursday here in this training center because we have learned over the past, this is going to be our third year in Missoula to do Give Local, and we've learned that those turnkey solutions are really critical for those of us in our nonprofits who, you know, if you're like me, you're one person, you know, I've got to do, I've got to do my regular job, and then we've just added this new online giving day, so we want to help you, and we want, and the, and the Community Foundation wants to help all of us with these tools that other communities have started, most of them we've we've borrowed or stolen from other places and then we're adjusting them for Missoula. So um, so what are we going to talk about today? We are going to talk about really what we're looking, what we're talking about with Give Local, what the opportunity is and why our boards are so critical. And, um, and then we're going to have some time for some small group discussion and really get on um, brainstorming, getting ideas because we could all use some new ideas, right? Like you don't want us to tell your board the same thing that you told them last month. So we'll get you some tools so that you can tell them something new. So before we dive into our boards, let's just take a look at the past couple of years. So this, these were the results from the first year that we did give local, which we, which we just kind of felt was kind of like a shot in the dark. You know, it was something that had been successful in other communities, big cities, and we thought, well, is it something that could work for Missoula? We want to get new donors. We want to get young folks involved. We're not trying to stretch too thin our current donor base, but we want to expand it. And so this is a way that we could do that. We thought, maybe we'll raise $100,000. Let's just see. And, um, and as you'll remember, we raised $135,000 in that 24-hour period, which was awesome. It's so fun, though. Website can be a site throughout the day. I love just looking at the leaderboard, you know, refresh, refresh. It's awesome. So exciting. And, um, and then last year, we continued and just catapulted past our goal of 200000 to 274000 And so we thought that was really exciting. It is kind of catching on in the community. Hopefully, as you're out talking to people about Give Local, they're 
more familiar with it. Every time I'm talking about it, people say, oh, yeah, I remember that last year. So that's what we want is it to become a part of the fabric of our culture and something that people in Missoula give, and this is a way to do that. So um, last, oh, so last, so th these are our results from last year. So this year, our goals, we have several, of course, because what gets measured gets done, right? But, um, but our main goals are we want to raise $300,000 in 24 hours from at least 3,000 donors. And that's a, it's a big increase in the number of donors, so we're really, we really want to get everybody involved. It's kind of our goal. And, um, and the way that we can do that is through our boards. Right. So what do we know about board engagement in 2015 um, is actually really nothing. We didn't have any sort of measurement to figure out how many, how many board members each nonprofit had, what their board participation was like. Um, I know that we didn't have 100% board participation. Did, does anyone here have 100% board participation for Give Local? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well done. Um, so what we want to do is we want to capture that information moving forward. And a lot of the material today um, is based off of the Sacramento Community Foundation who has really put a ton of effort into engaging their boards because they saw with all the nonprofits they have in their area, they could raise almost $100,000 more every year by just engaging those boards, board members. So this is sort of the information they've collected. If you look at this right part of the screen, you know, they have how many board members are in their community, looking at the diversity, um, and then they just sort of, they aren't looking at how much each board member was giving, but looking at average donations as well. Um, and so we want to be able to, to look at that moving forward. And we also want to have something like um, this, too. So talking to the nonprofit staff members themselves and saying, OK, did you feel like your board was engaged or highly engaged? And that can be more than giving, too. That can be doing social media shout outs to their friends. That can be thanking creatively um, the people who are giving, making sure there's a lot of donor stewardship after people are brought into your organization. Because we found that a huge percentage of Give Local donors, it's their first time donating to the organization. So how do you bring those people in and make sure they become consistent donors? And your board can be a really big part of that. So uh, let's just do a show of hands as sort of our first informal capture of this information. How many people felt their boards were highly engaged um, or you know, just engaged in, uh, or let's say highly engaged in Give Local last year. Okay. What about? Am I the only person? <laughs> you are. <laughs> what? What organization are you from? The Humane Society of Western Montana. Okay. All right. So Humane Society of Western Montana. Hat tip to you guys. Thank you. All right. So what about moderately engaged with Give Local? Okay. Um, how many of them were just sort of ambivalent to it? Okay. Um, um, what about disengaged? <laughs> didn't they knew, but they didn't care. And how many just didn't even know about it? Okay. What's that? Okay. All right. So we've got a pretty broad spectrum, but it seems like most people's boards are not really thrown that much input into the Give Local process. So what we want to do is make it as easy for you to give them steps to, to get involved. So it's concrete things for them to do, whether it is a post on Facebook or a tweet. Um, you know, something that's really simple and it's a way to build enthusiasm for it and make sure that moving forward they're going to be even more involved in Give Local. And so why do we care about boards? Right? I mean, there are like one audience. We have so many audiences. Your board, all they're committed to you. They already love you. So why? So let's use the opportunity to get them to feel the love, right? Like it's, this is an opportunity. It's Valentine's Day this weekend, right? We might as well, you know, let, give them the opportunity to feel some of the give local love. And if you're going out to get new people and you're not including your board, it's like you're getting your, it's like you're spending time with your new friends and you're not paying attention to your old friends, which isn't what you want from your, with your board either, you know. I think they're a really a critical audience. They already like you. They already have bought into your mission. So let's get them involved in this exciting effort too. So just as a... Um, you know, a way to visualize how much money boards could bring into our community. And I'm sorry, the projectors cut it off a little bit. 
but let's say we have 120 nonprofits participating, and that's kind of a low estimate. Last year we had 136, I think, so it could be more. And our average donation um, for actually both years was right around $103. And say we have 10 members per NPO, that's $123,000. Um, and that, that's you know saying that no board members gave, which we know isn't true, but that's how much they could account for in our community. So $300,000, it's like, wow, we're almost halfway there if we had every single board member give. So there is a huge potential for impact if we have 100% board giving across all the nonprofits participating. All right, and we already went through this. And so I just wanna say, why do we think board members are not that engaged? Like if we could just shout out uh, why we had trouble with board members in the past. Not computer literate. Thank you. What's that? They're not very computer set. Okay. They just didn't know. They didn't know? I think there are two things. I think, you know, we're in a process of educating our board to become engaged in everything that we do. Right. And the board has, most members have been there a while and it was never kind of part of their original, mm -hmm. but they were never given an orientation about the role of board members or anything like that. So, so we had that working against it. And then also to the point, um, they may be computer literate, but it's a generational thing. It's computer literate, but not really having social media tools. Right. Or if they do, it's like the grandkids on Facebook, you know, and mm -hmm. it's not using it the way right. we'd like them to use it. So there's this whole educational piece that we're going to need to do with them mm -hmm. to get them to even begin to think that way. Okay. And yeah. so I don't know if that's characteristic of other boards, but it certainly is ours. Are other people having those same experiences? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And with the Humane Society, I don't mean to pick on you, but did you um, do any sort of like tutorial with your board to show them this is the website, this is how you donate? Because I understand, you know, sometimes board members might not want to send a tweet or post a picture or anything like that, but the, the Kimbia has tried to make the Giving Day platform as simple as possible. So have you found success in explaining that to them? Yeah, absolutely. We did um, some like, I made up like a, an instruction sheet using like screen grabs from the actual site showing them where to go and where to click. Yeah. A literal step by step mm -hmm. um, of how to do it. And I think that was really effective. Um, I think it also helps um, that they were already aware of it. Mm -hmm. um, the, the person who had my job before I did was a big proponent of getting this started in our community. Mm -hmm. okay. So I think there was already a lot of enthusiasm mm -hmm. um, from our board. Um, and then I made myself available all day, um, you know, and we ask, and I'm, I'm sure other people do the same, um, for a, a monetary commitment from our board, a yearly contribution. And we don't set a minimum on that. It can be a small donation, um, but we, our goal every year is to have 100% um, participation in all of our fundraising from our board. Mm -hmm. um, and Give Local is something that I added to the board menu as mm -hmm. well, making it one more thing that's really easy for them to do mm -hmm. um, and check it off their list. How large is your board? Uh, Ten members. How many people would find a step-by-step -step screenshot of that like helpful for board members? Okay. Would you be able to send that Absolutely. to us? Okay. Yeah. That will be a resource we'll post on our website then because, you know, part of this session too is to capitalize on the great nonprofit network that we already have. We don't claim to have all of the ideas or even the majority of the ideas of the best way to engage your board, but we're hoping that conversations today will spark ideas and that's great. So we'll definitely have that resource on our website for all of you to access. Uh, we also have some other tools available. Um, we have two more boot camps, as Aaron mentioned. Uh, donor engagement next week um, on the 18th from 9 to 11. And then our final one is a, a different time. So it's on Thursday, but it's from 3 to 5 p.m. Um, and that's the eight-week work plan. And board members are definitely welcome to come to any of these if they're just unsure about Give Local or you know want to talk to people from the Community Foundation about what it's all about. Uh, they're more than welcome to come and chat with us. Um, we're also go we're having toolkits up on our website, so you know, like that screenshot will be something up there. We're working on our marketing toolkit uh, with our new logo and everything. Um, we're also going to have um, like Facebook, 
what do they call that in the back of your profile picture? The cover. cover. The cover photo. So, so uh, set thing I say like I gave local to, and you'll be able to put your organization because I love you know the Humane Society or whatever it is. Um, so something really easy for you to put up there or your board members to put up there. Um, the eight week work plan uh, has you set a series of goals. Um, it could be 100% board giving, you know, the number of donors you wanna reach out to, and then breaks down all of these things into clear steps that you do every week. It has really nice tables too where you can say, okay, this is the task, this is when it needs to be due by, and this is who is in charge of it. Um, we also have the individual development plan, which you all hopefully picked up at the sign-in table that you can uh, use as a template for your board members, and we're gonna do some brainstorming off of that, um, that worksheet in smaller groups today. Um, the best overall campaign is also a way to engage your board. Um, for instance, you know, one of the ways to earn points is a really creative thank you campaign, and so that could be some, a way you engage your board that maybe doesn't tax their, you know, their computer skills, or it doesn't mean they have to um, donate more money, but it's another way for them to be engaged. Um, and then like I said, we want to draw on this community of nonprofit leaders because you all have a, a ton of experience in this realm. Um, okay, so a little bit more on the best overall campaign. As I mentioned, it's, it's up on the website, but we'll have three winners uh, for small, medium, and large categories. And that's decided by, the categories are defined by how you register. So if you're under $100,000 operation budget, you're small in between 100 and 500,000 medium, and then above 500,000 medium. So here are just a few examples of how you can earn points to win the best campaign. Uh, before the event, you can attend a boot camp like you're here today. Um, we're gonna have random point opportunities in that weekly digest that you've been receiving on Mondays, or you know, bringing a mug today, random point. Um, day of opportunities, you or your board members can visit a donor lounge, um, which are you know little spaces we'll have set up all across town to donate. One of them is Plonk at happy hour from 5 to 6 p.m. So with every $10 donation, you get a free cocktail. Um, and you can get points for every board member you have who shows up there. Um, I think that's a pretty easy sell, um, but maybe it's not. I'm not sure. Um, you could you know, win a challenge award, which we're still working on. That could be you know, like the first donor between 12 a.m. and 1 a.m. Um, gets an extra $200 to give to their first nonprofit, their favorite nonprofit, for instance. And then also, please share photos during the day. We want to make sure that, you know, all of these nonprofits are taking pictures of, you know, what's going on, of donors they're interacting with, of board members maybe doing a creative thank you, and then sharing and tagging those photos. And then after the event, um, you can share a story about how Give Local brought in a new donor to you, or um, you know, how much fun you had on the day. Uh, and you can also participate in our giving celebration, which I mentioned. So that's more on the overall campaign, which is another way you can engage your board. <coughs> so what, when we talk about board engagement, what are we talking about? And we see really those three primary roles that your board can play in this day. And so if we kind of think big picture about what does that look like, no, it's the readiness and outreach. Are they letting people know, give locals coming, give locals coming. Hey, it's May 3rd, it's give local day. You know, even just if all of our boards told three people about give local, how many more people would get involved, right? Because we know that when people know about it, they are likely to give. So, so our boards are an incredible network that we can use for that. Of course, we want their personal gift, but they can also ask their friends or get them to, you know, be, they can be an advocate for giving to your organization. And then, like Carolyn mentioned, there are lots of opportunities for your board to get involved in thanking and stewarding. Because how many of you really need something else to do like you don't have enough work? <laughs> That's what I thought. So, so, as, so if Give Local, if you, we have a great Give Local day, we get a whole bunch of new donors, what am I gonna do with them? I am gonna get my board to reach out and help us make, get them involved and really develop those relationships because I don't have time to call everybody. I'm kind of busy, I have work to do. So, um, so, there are, so kind of thinking of those three buckets and we'll talk in just a few minutes about how we're gonna, um, about some specific ideas of how to engage them in all of those ways. So as we think about our board kind of expanding our network, um, so yeah, and I apologize that you can't see all this, but if we, over on this side, thinking about all the, all the groups that we have and then 
the you know the people who your board is here right they are part of your organization and they know it's they're just like your favorite donors really we're, we're kind of highlighting them as this small group of for most of us they're donors but they're that, those true tried and true advocates and so they are like here and then um, and then the people that they know it's the community of your community and that's so that's your board's coworkers, your board's friends, your board's families can really help you extend your reach. And then the people that they know. So, so you can see where if, if your board, if you have 10 people on your board and they each told three people, then what is that, 30? Right? And they each told three people, then we're getting to 90, and they each told three people, then pretty soon everybody in Missoula is going to be advocating for your organization and saying, hey, let's give to, let's give to the, go give to, give locals today, give to this nonprofit. So that, so there's huge value. And plus your board knows you already, like you, they're already here. So whether you want to do anything with them or not, that's up to you, but they're already in the core of your organization. So let's get you guys awake a little bit. So we want to, you know, so these are kind of our best practice ideas. I'm old school, I have to look at my paper. So really thinking about the two, kind of the two ways that you, that you might want to engage your board and really thinking about those as best practices. You know, like Caroline mentioned, we want to get 100% board giving. So now whose board is already giving to you? They're already donors. All right, yeah, most of us. So, so are you saying that we should ask them again? Yes, I am. This is a huge community opportunity. There's lots of chances to get challenge awards, which used to be the prize funds last year. And we also have, what's the other, bonus funds. Bonus funds, yeah. And we also have bonus funds. So, the, so it's a great opportunity for your board gifts to go even further by participating in this day. And remember, and give local, they can give $10. Now, most people on your board, they're not going to give $10, right? They're going to give $100, $50, you know, whatever they can. But, so, yes, I'm saying yes. It's this exciting community event. It's a reason to ask them again. Do you mean you're asking me to give on top of my annual gift? Yes, I am. Don't you want to be a part of this really exciting community day? And then the other way is to really... Um, get them to help build relationships, right? If you're posting something on Facebook and your board can share it, tell their friends, email it out, whatever it is, we want them to, we want to use their, their networks and really help build relationships. So when we, so did everybody get a copy of the individual development plan when you came in? All right, so if you wanna look at this just briefly, so what I really like about this is I'm, I like to check things off, right? Like I'm a planner, I make my list, I check it off. So that's what's nice about this. And I like, you know, I'm, I have kind of a lot of work to do, so having it specific, what am I supposed to do today, which is where I'm really excited about that eight week work camp, plan boot camp, please come, um, is gonna help. So, so I like this checklist because, you know, what I, it tells me exactly what I'm supposed to do. And, and with our board, you know, if you, I found with our board, if I can ask them for specifics, then they are likely to respond. If I ask for generalities, then like, well, I don't really know what you want, and they can't help. So, um, so this gives us some specifics that we can get them to do and really help us. So, um, so you can see some of the ways that we that we want them to do. We want them to help with that relationship building. We want them to give personally, and then there's a couple blanks. And so I thought we. Take some time, and we'll just divide up, what do you think, two, two or three groups? Let's do three groups, yeah. So we'll divide up into three groups and just spend a few minutes kind of brainstorming for, in that other great ideas I have for attracting individual donations include. Because when I, if I go to our board meeting and I just give them a blank piece of paper, some days it's great, and some days they just look at me with their eyes glazed over and I get nothing back, right? So I always like to have ideas in the back of my pocket, like, what do you mean? Erin, what do you want from us? Oh, well, what about if you could do this? So that's what we're looking for is, are those ideas so that we can all have them in our back pockets for those conversations with our board members. Does that make sense? Yeah. And all I right. think we'll actually do four groups. We have about okay. 32 people. So if you do eight people in each group. Sure. Um, and we'll just, and we'll use the whiteboards around the room. So we've got one over here. We'll 
Maybe we could do two over here because we got so many whiteboards, and then we'll bring this one to the group in the middle. And can people self divide, or do we need to count numbers? <laughs> Are you responsible enough to self divide? All right. So, which group would like to tell us first? What are some other great ideas board members can can attract individual donations? Anybody? Anybody? We can go. All right. Um, we said encourage their coworkers to give. Most of these people have other jobs and a life outside of our board. Um, so no way. I know, it's <laughs> weird. Um, but I think that's especially good day of, um, you know, when you're in the office. Yeah. Um, we, there was uh, some discussion in our group about, um, you know, board members or supporters who live out of state for some of our organizations. Um, so an idea was to specifically ask those people to give during that time block um, when, when that prize is available for out of state donors um, and sending like a personal message to those people rather than just a post on Facebook. Um, we talked about providing the board members with social media and email templates, something that they can easily kind of insert um, their own statements in, but they can send or post quickly that day. Um, sending reminders, um, we talked about that both email, but then also like postcard reminders that could come from um, either us or the board. Um, you know, don't forget to give today. Um, and then finally, having the board members invite um, their friends to donor lounges and day of events, the kickoff event. Great, thank you. Uh, is there another group that would like to share out next? Yes. So um, we thought about if some organizations that have windows or storefronts to put a board member make a store display in the window um, to do some kind of competition uh, internally with board members or board of donors or people in there, somewhat like the ice buck challenge or like that. Um, we like to talk about encouraging our board members to do a house party or a party, maybe having a party for all of us to watch the leaderboard come up as it goes through the day. Uh, little cards to hand out uh, about the organization, about Give Local, um, the challenge, which is similar to the competition. Um, and we talked about finding out who's on Facebook of our board members to make sure that we you know who is on and who isn't and maybe help those that are not get on Facebook and then we can add on our posts. And then we also thought about having buttons that maybe you guys would have for all of us, but buttons that our board members could wear that say, ask me about you, ask me why I give local, ask me about your local, ask me about why I'm giving to the Peace Center or wherever else. That's a great idea, and we have been talking about that on the marketing committee. Big buttons. You want big buttons? Big. All right. I don't know if we have the budget for giant buttons, but I know for at least little ones with the B or something like that. Yes. Or even a sticker. A sticker. That's yeah. Good. You know, I think that'd be great to have something. Ask me why I give local. So that's what Meredith really is aiming for in this third year is building towards total community awareness. So um, even if you're not giving, you know that it's happening and it's a topic of conversation. All right. Another group. Yes. We're just talking about some of the ways to get a hold of people. Um, there's groups that have senior citizens, and we're talking about they don't use the social media, and so get back on like phone banks or sorry, oh. that type. Okay, sorry. Um, so anyway, the phone banks, the calling. Um, what else did we have? Being the donor. Yes. Oh. oh. They could host the donor lounge. Mm -hmm. They've got a lot of square footage. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, providing transportation, perhaps, to the mm -hmm. event that they have. So those are that was something a little different. Great. Thank you so much. And I think we have one more group or two more groups. Yep. So we said um, well, this is your day to take off work and engage on social media. So actually encourage the board members to spend some time and engage their friends and their contacts on social media um, beyond what we are doing as um, you know NPOs. Um, 
info cards that can be given to board members that they can uh, reference and hand out. So, like uh, a handbills almost, mm -hmm. right? A stack of them. Bring it to a board meeting. Make sure they all have them. They can hand them to their friends, um, and it's a way to engage that's not electronic. Right. And it's also a quick reference guide of what's going on. Where, what are the links of all of the different uh, places that they need to know about? What are the hashtags for that event? Um, and all those kinds of things. And digitally also. Right, and you can send that same thing digitally. Um, and somebody else already said this, I think a couple people did, but give them the verbiage that you want them to use as they're communicating about this. Um, obviously they would use that as a guide, um, but some of them might use it verb word for word, so. Um, and then just ask the board members, how do you want to engage with this? What are your strengths? And play to that. Um, get the board involved with follow-up, so writing thank you cards. And also, this can be a year-long branding campaign so that they can be taking pictures on Instagram or whatever and using the correct hashtags all throughout the year. One thing that I thought of uh, that's not on the board as we were you know, finishing up, look at other um, di you know, one day or one week long fundraising events like Montana Public Radio, um, KBGA, and some of the things that they are doing. Um, KBGA is really good at generating excitement because like one of the things that they said was like the program director, if they reach a certain level of giving, will get a stupid tattoo. <laughs> and, they're like, and then they have a video of him getting that tattoo. Um, so stupid things like that. So who wants to promise to get a tattoo? <laughs> <laughs> it's gotta be the B. Right? <laughs> yes. I have a question. Sure. Is there some way if somebody comes into your office and writes a check on LinkedIn that you can get credit for that through Give Local? Um, it has to pass through the Missoula Community Foundation. Um, we wouldn't take any money off of that, but it does have to pass through our offices and then be allocated to you because that's technically the stream it follows for online donations. Um, that being said, we are a two-person office and don't have a ton of capacity to process hundreds of checks. Um, so I would have to check with Meredith about that in terms of is there a minimum amount for us to process that? Because, for instance, we're processing all of the matching funds you bring in, but we've set a limit as $500 per matching donor to process through just because we don't have the capacity to, to process you know, 20 $20 checks um, that are going to be used for matching funds, if that makes sense. Yeah. And I can get back to you on that. I'll check no, with her. She's on vacation. Just ballpark answer. Yeah. And so I think one common thing that we've heard is that this is an online giving day, right? Like website, platforms, lots of social media, we're all excited about that. But if your board members aren't huge digital online people, they can still get involved. So I love those ideas to get them involved. And it really is about you know, knowing your audience, knowing your, knowing your board members. Where are they? What are they doing? And how do they need information? If you have a lot of handouts at your board meeting, then they probably like paper, and they probably need the handout. If they don't, if they get mad, if you bring them a handout and they want everything electronically, then don't bring them a handout, send it to them by email. So it is, there's lots of options, and we can definitely you know, um, adjust so that we can use what we have. Now, a lot of the tools that the Community Foundation is sharing with us are digital, because that's an easy way for Caroline to get all, us all the information, right? Mm -hmm. So that doesn't mean that if you have to give it digitally as well. So do continue to think about what's going to work for your board to get them excited, to get them engaged. Maybe it is a crazy tattoo. Temporary tattoos. <laughs> there we go. There we go. What? Well, yeah, Jesse. I just thought of something real quick. So I'm part of a networking group. I'm the chair of a business networking group. And something that we did recently is we created a private secret group on Facebook that is internally for us to share different things and talk about stuff. But it's actually working to reach out to other people, other groups, other organizations, and get them invited in. It could be something you could do with your boards by actually creating a private, like, give local committee group for those boards that are active on social media so that you can share things, work through that, 
send stuff out and then they can link that outwards to Facebook from the private group out. That's kind of what we're doing with our PNG because some things we just want to be able to talk internally and send stuff and then they can share it out. But it's a great way to get things talking, get things sharing in a group format that maybe isn't group email or things like that. Just a, another way to link up and get groups working together internally. And so would that be something that the Community Foundation would set up in your vision? Or is it something like each nonprofit would I have a private? Each nonprofit. Each nonprofit. Okay. Especially if you have boards that are active on social media or involved that way, you can set up your own private group. And you can definitely like include you guys in on that group so that you can send things in too. But just your own brainstorming private yeah. group on Facebook session that can then get some sharing some uh, pictures, some uh, write-ups, that kind of stuff, and then share externally from that. Yeah. It's been Absolutely. working for my networking group pretty well. Great. Thank you. Yes? Question. Mm -hmm. um, so if somebody comes into your office and brings you a check, can mm -hmm. you enter that in to give local? Um, or is that? No. No. I don't think so. Okay. Not unless... Yeah, and because you have to put a credit card in to give local. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So if you have if you have paper donations, they have to go through the community foundation in order to be counted in the give local total. Okay. You, I mean, it I would still be a donation to your organization. It just wouldn't show up on the leaderboard until Meredith until we process. Yeah. Right. Yes. I, I did that year before last for a couple of my older donors. Okay. They brought me a check, and then I they brought it out to me, and then I made the donation. Then you made the donation. Made so yeah, you, I had to keep track of it because I had to thank them and whatnot. You know, they wanted me, but right, they right. Were able and willing to do that. Right. So if that's something you want to take on um, for your organization, you're welcome to do that. Yes, Rita? That's the way our challenge came down last year, just because our board is kind of still writing checks. And so out of the board members, we had probably 50% board engagement. And the way they engaged was by creating a challenge fund. Um, and only one of them did it by credit card online. Okay. And the remainder gave us checks, which is a little bit of a headache. To, but you know our numbers were still small enough. I mean, you know we probably had like 30 discrete donors or something, or maybe somewhere around there last year, okay. um, which was pretty good. You know, it was kind of our first year out on it. Right. But um, but it does you kind of keep two sets of bullets, and so mm -hmm. what showed up on our leaderboard was really something like 60 percent of the actual total that we raised with the campaign. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah, so that's the downside because, you know, I'm kind of competitive. I wanted to be right up there with all the right. money we actually really did raise. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. Yeah, and as far as that, you know, not just competition of seeing your name up on the leaderboard, but for what we're calling the share funds, which right. is you exactly get a percentage right. of all this money that sponsors have put in or, you know, people have donated specifically to this fund. Say you have 5% of all the donors who have donated to Give Local. So that could be $10, it could be $200. It gives smaller nonprofits a really good shot at getting a bigger chunk of that, that end total. So 5% of donors, 5% of that whole fund. That can make a big difference if 50% you know, of your board is still giving by checks. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is there a way on the website when you go on to donate to indicate that you are a board member or um, you know, you're a new, I know you can put in that you're a new donor. Mm -hmm. oh. Right. We're actually adding that feature this year. So we're going to have that and the option to put in a business. Um, so we're doing oh. a, a business competition as well for businesses who get, you know, 100% of their employees to donate. Um, so it'll be self-selecting on whether or not they want to check that box, yeah. but they will have that option. Yeah. And uh, just following up on something you just said that just sparked another again. Um, Instead of trying to get your boards potentially to donate on that day and really be invested in that way, it could be an interesting way for you to talk to your boards and get them to create a challenge fund. And so have that worked out with them before the day so that during the day you can say, we have $5,000 in challenge fund money. If you can you know, donate to this amount, then we're doing this matching program. Right. So potentially getting your boards preset for
for the day to create an actual challenge fund for your organization might be a potentially easier way to get right. board involvement for maybe some older demographics and stuff too. Yeah, absolutely. Because if a board member is, you know, they don't want to give online, but they really want to give to give local, they can write a $500 check and be a matching fund. So that's another option too. And then you can promote that on in your profile on the Giving Day site that you have a match, and that incent that incents other donors to to give then to your organization because they know their <laughs> donations going even farther. Right. And if you get us those those matching funds, you know, early enough, and I, I don't have the deadline on the top of my head right now, but I'll send it out to you. We will have <laughs> that up on the leaderboard on May third. So you know, if you have a thousand dollars in matching funds, it'll be up there at twelve oh one a.m. And that might be, that's a really good way to deal with those donors that, that your board members who want to write checks, because then we can get it all handled, it can count in the leaderboard, and then you can even make more donations off of those, those donors who we were just trying to figure out how to deal with. So that's a great idea, Jesse. Is that new this year? Because I know we tried last year and we couldn't do that. To have matching funds? To have it promoted on... It is new, yeah, yeah to have it, have it up there on our profile. We've got to to say we had you now this large challenge. Oh, for us. Yeah, I um I don't think I have the graphic with me right now, but how it'll look on your profile is it'll have your name and then the next thing that shows up is matching funds in okay. color bold with however much money you have. Even if it doesn't run through you? No, it has to run through us. So it has to be a credit card. No, no. we can process matching gifts through um through checks. Okay. If it's sent early enough. Okay. In fact, I think we have to process matching gifts through checks. Do you know what that is? The matching like funds. Maybe? Because no. matching funds will arrive in our office before the day of giving. But so it, it can be $500. Be $500. So it has to be $500. Okay, and it has to be a check. It can't be credit. Is that what you're yes, for matching funds. So for that initial supply of matching funds. You know, obviously whenever someone donates to have it matched, it'll be through credit card on the day of. Does that make sense? No. No. <laughs> no. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Do you know when the deadline might be to have the matching funds to your office via check? Yeah, let me check. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Are you just approximate? It's in April. April. Um, I can get my calendar up. So, and what we're talking about right now are the, if you have a match for... Yeah, maybe Erin can do a better job explaining so, this. So, so, Maria sends me an email. She says, Garden City Harvest has, we have a group of donors who's created a match, and if we raise $1,000 on May 3rd through Give Local, then we'll get this match. Then I know as a donor, oh, if I give my donation to Garden City Harvest, I'm going to help them double their money, right? So that's what we're talking about is the, the, the pool, the $1,000 match. That's what we're talking about right now. And then the individual donors, of course, just go on online to give their gifts that day. But if you do have some board members who want to write checks, you might lump them all together and make yourself a matching fund. And then that will show up in your organization's profile on the Giving Day website. So when people go to givelocalmissoula.org, click on your organization, they're going to see the name of the organization, and then they're going to see this organization has a match, has a match for Give Local, and then I'll know, oh, right, that's why I came to give to you today, so that you can get this extra $1,000. So if we have a group of donors coming in ahead of time, mm -hmm. let's say 20 of them, mm -hmm. wonderful group, and we've got 1000 or $2,000 in that fund, do we do we go ahead and put that in our account, cut you a check saying here is the matching? Yes, you can do that. Mm -hmm. So all you would do is you write that check to the Missoula Community Foundation memo line, give local name of your organization. Okay. And the deadline is April 26th. Okay. And that is a very hard deadline. It won't be public on your website or on the give local profile that you have matching funds if it comes in after that. Does that answer it, the yeah, questions about matching? Yeah, does that make sense matching. to people about matching funds? And the minimum is $500. $500, yep. On one check. On one check. So if you have donors that are giving you $10 checks, $20 checks, $100 checks, then lump them all together and write one check that's more than five, that's $500 or more to the community foundation. Yeah. Just so that we don't make Caroline and Meredith nuts processing $10 checks. <laughs> we want to make them nuts in other ways. Yeah. Counting all the money that everyone's raised. Yeah. Watching the leaderboard. All right, so 
Um, so how are you feeling about the individual development plan? Does anybody, just like off the top of your head right now, gut reaction, did, who thinks that you might use this with your board members? Okay, good, so it's a, wor a worthwhile tool, and we'll make sure that it, electronically it'll be up on the Give Local um, site under About, and all the tools there. So, um, great, and then, and then I wanna, and as you use it, let us know what you think. So, um, so now we wanna do a little bit more um, getting your ideas, and so looking for a couple of examples that you'd be willing to share, looking for a good example of when you successfully engaged your board, and then an example when you had some challenges so that we can all we can think together how do we figure, how do we address the challenges. Yeah, and the Humane Society has been very generous in offering a lot of their um, stories, so if we could have someone else, it doesn't have to be 100% board giving, it doesn't even have to be give local but just strategies you've used to successfully engage your board. Jesse? Uh, recently, we sent out a DISC assessment to our board, a very small 30 question assessment, trying to figure out their strengths and weaknesses and what they foresee doing better and being more engaged with our group because we are also trying to bring new members on, so just trying to figure that out. And it was just an easy survey. I would say about 80% of the board was really like, this is cool, I'm gonna fill this out, send it back. And it was able to give us some pretty interesting feedback on how they see themselves actively in the board and how they might do more or some challenges they have internally by being on the board. We did have a couple who were like, what is this? Thing and trying to talk them through it. It was pretty entertaining. One of our board members is 87, so we have to do a lot of working with him. But it, we got it all figured out, and um, the feedback was really great. It's allowed us to move forward on some new member growth and some new strategies for how to involve our board. So that's something that has worked out recently for us, is just doing a small, easy disk assessment survey letting them tell you what they think is best and how they can engage themselves with it. And what are you doing with the results of those surveys? Have you entered into that yet? Like, is it one-on-one -on -one meetings? Is it just a change in approach with those board members? It's a little bit of both. So okay. we're actually in the process of compiling the data right now. Okay. The next step will be actually reaching out to the board members, setting up some meetings, talking out with them some new um, strategies on how they will work with us more, and then we're, once we have the one-on-one -on -one meetings, we're going to call an additional board meeting sometime this spring and kind of go over what was found, who wants to do what, and get consensus on some new strategies moving forward and also involving new board members that we're reaching out to. Great. Thank you. Is there anyone else who'd like to share on you know, strategies that have been successful for them? If I can, I'm sorry. Oh, no, no, I, I just didn't want to put you on the spot no, again, okay. so this please share more. That we started um, probably in the last six months, nine months, um, with our board at our monthly meeting. We take five minutes of our board meeting and dedicate it to what we call speed fundraising. Um, and we just pick a different topic that we're going to focus on. And, and sometimes it's kind of like a group think, um, similar to what we did today, where board members will get in a small group and generate some ideas. Other times it's like a, an entire group discussion. Um, and we focus on stuff just like this. Like what are some ways that you can get donors more involved? Um, and it's, I have found that one, our board members get excited about it because it's not just going over papers. And two, it makes fundraising a little less intimidating for them. Um, and it's seriously, it's five minutes, super quick. We just pick like a broad range of whatever's current for us mm -hmm. and just get their feedback. Um, and it's been really, really successful. Awesome, thank you. That's a great idea. You know, you don't have to, You, if, the, if your board doesn't like checklists and they already have a lot of paper and they don't want to look at another piece of paper or they don't, or they get mad if you're waste, wasting trees or whatever, then don't give them this, but maybe you could spend five minutes doing just what you guys did. How else could you help us get donors on Give Local? Mm -hmm. That's a great idea, Emily. Yeah. I'm stealing it. <laughs> All right, anyone else? 
All right, so let's move into you know some of the difficulties you've had. Maybe it's with give. We we'll probably focus on give local on this. I heard you know a lot of people um, discussing that in these small groups. Whether it was you know I'm just not going to get them engaged in social media or they don't know about it. Um, so just talking a little bit about that and doing sort of a group think around that and hopefully giving you some solutions to take back to your organization. Anybody willing to share? Yeah, I'll share. Oh, good. It's, kind of just, it's kind of reiterating what you said, actually, Aaron, what you said about being really clear about what you need. And uh, since our board kind of had a history of really not understanding engagement with fundraising and that that was part of what a board does, um, last year we did exactly that. We were really clear with them what we wanted was the board to own the challenge fund. And that was it. So we didn't get into social media, we didn't get into anything you know, that was more give local. It was, we'd like to create a challenge. They all understood that. Um, and so we just kind of gave it to them and let people step forward. Um, and so it was like a frontal assault, basically. And, uh, and I think we still need to do that with our board, but I think we can be slightly more sophisticated with what the ask really is this year. Mm -hmm. But I think with our board, just because of the level of board development and we we're really working on that, mm -hmm. that we're still in that, in that, like, you know, in the trenches, frontal assault, here it is. You know, but we're still not demanding, like I really respect the fact that you get a financial commitment from your entire board. For us, um, it's been more of a backdoor thing. You know, we had a gala this year and that, w that was like really the first time we've ever had a 100%. Mm -hmm. um, so I think we're starting to make inroads with that, but for us it's like be really clear, be direct, make it one thing, mm -hmm. see what you get. Yeah, thank you. I know it worked with several different groups in the past few years. Um, I work more on the get local side than the actual with organizations, but I had three or four organizations that I kind of like said to sign up with get local and got them going. Um, and when I would have brainstorming meetings with my clients and things like that, one of the biggest things that kept coming up was the board just didn't get it. They, they, didn't understand what the skip local was. They, they, there wasn't awareness of it. It wasn't an important thing. It was just this other thing that maybe the development person was doing or the ED was doing. You know, mm -hmm. there wasn't importance put on it. And um, so that's something in my new position at the historic museum that I'm trying to be like. This is important, not just for money but for awareness, for outreach, for bringing the community together. So trying to sell it to the board in not just a fundraising way, but get them to understand how important it is in a spectrum of ways. Because I think that's one of the things that for the past couple of years with some clients that fell down on a little bit was just the board didn't understand how important it was and wasn't really aware of it. So trying to get them involved more on, um, yes, we can get money, but we can get our name out there. It's a community partnership. There's all these other important social aspects to this. So I think that was something that I'm trying to work on is just let them know how important it is. It's not just another little fundraising thing that she's doing or she's doing. Mm -hmm. We're all doing. I mean, is anybody sitting here thinking, I already asked my board to do so much, I can't ask them to do anything else? Mm -hmm. That's what I think. Every time I go to the board meeting, I ask them to do, ask them to do something, right? I'm the fundraiser, I ask them for more money every month. So, you know, it's challenging, but like Caroline's slide with the funnel, if you think of that, I mean, what a missed opportunity if we don't engage them, if we don't give them the chance to really be our advocate on this day. Like, who, I mean, I'd love to be at the top of that leaderboard during the day sometime. Like, that would be awesome. And how exciting for your board members to be a part of that. So, you know, I think it's really hard when we all feel like we're already stretching thin. But you know what, ask them, they expect you to ask them, and let them decide if they're just too busy and they, and they can't do anything. We don't have to decide for them. Yes. I think the thing that's nice about this, and I have not capitalized on it in the past, but as I'm listening to you, the fact that it is specific things you can ask the board to do. 
so often I do these pep talks about how the role of the board is to raise money, and I'm really good at the pep talk. And they look at me like, can we move on to something else, please? Uh, you know, whereas this is a very specific task. Mm -hmm. And if they complete it, you're going to get a tattoo. <laughs> so it's, it's even more exciting. And it's over quickly. It's 24 hours, and that is it. You're not going to ask them again in June for Give Local. Yeah. And I think going back to that, asking them a specific thing. Mm -hmm. Don't give them a whole bunch of stuff. Like, this is your job. This is your task. Yeah. If we can do this, this is all I'm asking of you. Yeah. Very if, if you have a board member who loves to chat with people and is, you know, prominent mm -hmm. in the community, you don't have to ask them to tweet something or put it on Facebook. Just tell them to talk to people about it at the grocery store or the coffee shop or something. You know, if they talk to two or three people, that makes a difference. Give them a handbook. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, that keeps doing that. We can go. Yeah. Um, yeah. Does anyone else have any other, you know, problems they've been having that they want the group's input on, or should we move to, you know, just a general question and answer about give local or board engagement in general? Yeah. We struggle with bringing things to the board mm -hmm. and then them not wanting to do anything about it, mm -hmm. and it ends up being on the staff. So not that we keep asking them. Yeah. Five people staff. Yeah. yeah. So then, when we ask the board, or if the board has an idea, mm -hmm. it ends up being on the staff, and then the board just kind of backs. Yeah. Right. So trying to engage them is very difficult. Have people, you know, encountered that as well, and found any good solutions to that? Or does it generally just fall back to staff, and you guys sort of do it? One thing we've started doing is really encouraging board members to go to any type of board governance, any kind of board training, be it MNA or something local. And um, it's it's kind of um, it, it's I don't know why I'm using all this military stuff. It's kind of like hand to hand battle, you know. So <laughs> so um, we have at this point in time, I'd say, you know, out of our board, we've got three or four people now who have gone to trainings where somebody else has told them kind of what their role is and they've started to bring it back to the board and to get excited about it. So I would suggest the kind of third party approach if you can do it, mm -hmm. um, either with a training for your own board and bring a consultant in, but you know, we've just started offering opportunities and, and letting people step forward and take them. So the rest of the board is now kind of the ones who haven't, they're kind of thinking that they're starting to be a little bit odd, odd personnel mm -hmm. and probably we're getting to, to see people respond better to whenever we put something out there. It's another way to do it. It's all, so, it's all process, you know, mm -hmm. and for those of us who have things to do immediately, it, you've just got to take, it's a different tempo when you're working with the board. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Well, and I think, you know, in, our, in my experience, for, well, first, I, th I flatter myself and I think, well, the reason they want me to handle it is because I'm competent, right? So it's the curse of competency. <laughs> but it does help if you have those specific things. So if you, if you come to your board and say, help me with Give Local, they're going to be like, okay, go raise the money. But if you say, you know, Give Local's coming up next month and I really need you to make sure that you tell everybody that you see on May 3rd to go on Give Local and donate to us, or if you, you know, can you please tell five people in your network about Give Local and ask them to give? If you ask those specifics, then they're much more likely to do it. And once you can get them to do something, then they're, you know, we all, once we get going, we're more likely to go, right? It's like working out. So, um, so I think those really, finding that specific thing that you think they might jump at and then, get it, and then they can, they'll do it. And you, if you follow up with them, you know, how, is, how are your talks with those five people? Oh, that was so great because I had a reason to call, you know, Susie. I haven't talked to her in years, and it was so nice to talk to her. And so, so I think those specifics are where I've really been able to, mm -hmm. to get them to give me what I want. So just thinking I can handle it. Great. Well, um, if no one has any other stories to tell, I found this comic on the New Yorker, which I really enjoy. It says. I'm sorry, dear, I wasn't listening. Could you repeat what you've said since we've been married? So if you haven't been listening at all today, and you suddenly are having some spasms of guilt that you missed something important, now is the time to you know, ask any questions of us or of the group at large. Yes? What are your other, 
your relations with other these locals in Montana? Because we, I'm from Planned Parenthood, we have a statewide uh, organization, and we're also going to be participating in the Go Local and help them. Okay. So we are thinking maybe having a competition. So I just was wondering what were your relationships with the other Go Locals? Um, it's very strong relationship. So uh, Missoula was the first one uh, to do it in the state, and so since then we've sort of been helping other communities get it started from, you know, like, explaining how the website setup works to how to engage your nonprofits. Um, and we have a conference call that used to be bi-weekly and now is a little bit more flexible, so we're talking with them. Um, we're gonna probably set up a uh, competition with Bozeman. Um, so for instance, I think that Plonk happy hour, since there's a Plonk location in Bozeman as well, it's, we'll both have the happy hour $10 donation free cocktail competition. And uh, the owner of Plonk is really excited about it. So. For Bozeman and Missoula, for instance, they want to put um, like an online graphic screen to follow both of those, um, and I'm sure there are options for you know Helena as well to get involved in things like that. But yeah, there's a lot of communication between all of the the give locals. So we have to out drink Bozeman, <laughs> <laughs> or other things, or we can get ahead before five o'clock and just be you know crushing them up until then. But you could put it that way too. <laughs> There will be non-alcoholic incentives. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a way to find out? Um, I mean, I know we know Plonk and we know the partners that we're working with thus far. Is there a way, though, to get a little bit more in-depth stuff from maybe logos, maybe things like that, so that when we're marketing for mm -hmm. our organization to give local as a whole to say, come down to Plonk and like maybe make some flyers, use logos, use that kind of imagery. Is there a way to get that kind of stuff? Yeah, we're hoping to have that all on the givelocalmissoula.org slash about, and it'll be under marketing toolkits, and those aren't up yet, um, but we're working on them, and we'll put them up ASAP. Yes? You've got the Plonk location. Yep. Last year there was something down at Karis, but I gather you're not doing that. We're thing. not doing that. We had a lot of, you know, yeah, strong it, feedback that it didn't work. It didn't work well. Um, no. So. so, but besides Plonk then, do you have other ones set up? Or yep. Okay. Um, they're all in progress of being, uh, in process of being confirmed, but, you know, a couple that are almost there, like in the Florence lobby, which is where our, our office is, yeah. Posh Chocolat is going to be uh, giving some donations, we think the Redbird will be giving some donations, we're also going to have free chair massages there, um, so that will be headquarter in terms of donor lounges, um, then there will be some other ones around town as well, but that's all being um, solicited right now. Any other questions? Well, was this helpful? Did we talk about what you what you thought we were going to talk about? Yeah. Good. Excellent. All right, score! Yay! My work here is done. Yeah. So we're going to let you out a little early. Enjoy your you know free thirty five minutes. So good morning. Yeah. And we'll see you next week.